practically every product we buy started with things being dug out of the ground. A mobile phone, for example, contains up to 50 minerals and metals. Some of these raw materials are only found in a few places. However, trade in many minerals is hampered by export taxes and other barriers. The idea behind imposing export restrictions is to boost domestic industries by developing processing capacity to raise revenue and create jobs. But they don't work. An OECD study of four African countries that imposed export restrictions on minerals showed no benefit to downstream industries in any of the countries. Worse, in some countries, the effect on mining was significantly negative. And OECD research shows that once export restrictions are in place, they are rarely removed. Depending on minerals can be problematical for a country. Economists even talk about the resource curse because economic growth from mineral resources is lower than that due to other factors and can be very volatile. Countries that rely heavily on their mineral wealth often have weaker institutions, spend less on education and are more corrupt. In the worst cases, warring groups fund violent action through resource extraction. Fortunately, there are concrete examples of how mineral resources can contribute to sustainable economy-wide growth. Botswana worked its way up from least developed to upper middle income country, not by imposing export restrictions on its diamond mines, but by investing all the revenue from diamonds collected by the government in education, health and infrastructure. Australia rejected export restrictions too, but benefits by prioritising activities such as engineering and geological services. Mining services now account for 7% of Australian employment, far more than mining itself. Chile has benefited from its natural resources by supporting a network of suppliers to the mining sector, where they have been successful in adapting technologies to specific geological conditions on the ground. The evidence shows that mineral resources offer little or even harm countries who restrict trade in the hope of achieving broader economic development, while they can strongly benefit countries that offer stable, balanced, regulatory environments.